So in this video, we're going to be looking at concussion. Um, I've got Joe here. Hello. And uh, basically, Joe, um, concussion, have you ever experienced it? Uh, yeah, I got kicked in the face once. Uh, and by a person or by a...? Uh, by a football. Okay. I went down like a sack of potatoes. And then what happened after that? What, what, what did you sort of experience? Uh, well, I experienced, I was lifted to my feet and told to play on, which is not recommended for anyone. Yeah. Uh, what well, I should have had, I should have been taken off and then had two weeks off. Uh, it wasn't particularly well handled. Have you had a concussion? Yeah, um, so I got blown up in Afghanistan when I was in the army. Show off. Uh, so yeah, so um, the, the vehicle I was in went over an anti-tank mine. Uh, so I got hit on the head, I was wearing a helmet, but to be honest, I don't really remember anything about mm. it. I, I wasn't knocked out, but I just don't have any memory of that time. Yeah. And they, they called it mild traumatic brain injury, which is just a yes. more kind of scientific medical mm -hmm. word for concussion. But to be honest, since then, um, I do quite a lot of sport with uh, wearing helmets. So this is like my motorbike helmet um, over here. So I always tend to wear stuff like this. I've, I do hit my head occasionally and you never know when it's going to happen. So I definitely mm -hmm. think having, you know, spending the money on the helmet with like the right kind of systems in place mm. definitely can potentially pay off. But um, yeah, so Joe, tell me, um, what is concussion? So the way people normally think about a concussion is that your brain, during a collision of some sort, your brain hits the side of your skull and wobbles about a bit and you're left with the symptoms of a concussion. Yeah, so I've heard it's a bit like your, your brain kind of keeps traveling forward even though your skull has stopped. It kind of bounces off the inside, you get a bit of a bruise there. Um, but that's not necessarily true? Uh, not, it's not entirely accurate. So your brain, like an egg, is made of two different type density materials. So you've got the yolk and the egg white. In your brain, you have grey matter and white matter. Yeah. And what happens during a collision, because they have different densities, they accelerate and decelerate at different rates. So that compresses and uh, stretches the, the neurons in your brain. Okay. Essentially kind of damaging them to an extent. Not Normally they're not damaged, they just get a bit kind of confused. Yeah. Which is where the mental confusion, the memory loss and things like that occur. In a serious enough concussion, they will get damaged. Okay. But if you um, shake an egg violently enough... Yeah, so I've actually got an egg over here. Um, so what, I just shake the egg? You shake the egg violently. So, so this is like an impact. Yeah. And I guess if I keep doing this. Yeah. So while Lewis shakes the egg like a madman, right, you may think, okay, the yolk and the white are hitting against the eggshell, but what's happening is the egg white and the egg yolk, kind of the boundaries get kind of damaged. Yeah. And so they leak or bleed into each other, which is essentially what happens when to your brain when you have a concussion. The white matter and the grey matter get kind of jumbled up or they mix or they bash into each other or they stretch, the connection stretch, and you're left with, uh, unfortunately, some type of brain injury. So it's not just one one bit of the brain at the front no. that's bruised, it's kind of throughout yeah. as all of that stuff's moving mm. past each other. Yeah, because you can have brain injuries that happen at the centre, that you get the brain tissue at the centre of your brain could be damaged. Yeah which obviously is nowhere near your skull. So how would you explain that if it was just the part of your brain that hit your skull? Yeah, and this isn't, you're not a medical doctor. This no, isn't like a oh medical God. diagnosis. This yeah. is what you've learned. This is from. what we've learned from looking at the physics of the, the brain and what happens during a collision. Yeah, okay, so I reckon I've shaken this up enough. Right. Sometimes this doesn't work. Okay, well, let's see what happens. So right. it, normally if you break an egg, you get like the kind of the central uh, yellow part. Um, here we go, right. I'm not a chef either, so... Has it worked? Well, yeah, kind of. Yeah. So you wouldn't expect the egg to be completely scrambled. There's no real... Um, it's not I mean, completely mixed up. No. Uh, and But what you have, the structure of the egg is somewhat damaged. Thank you, Lewis. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of, obviously, um, concussion is not as severe as this. Uh, horrible brain injuries, unfortunately, mm. would be quite yeah. severe. Um, but yeah, you're essentially looking at two different types of matter with different densities, therefore having different masses, therefore accelerating at different rates for the same force. And a force from a concussion doesn't have to be direct to the head. If I get hit here and my head goes this way, that is similar to my body being hit this way and my, my head being left behind. Because what happens is as you reach the end range of your next, uh, you, the end of your next range of motion, you get a whiplash effect. 
So if we model the neck using a band, right, you can stretch it and stretch it and then you feel it come to the end and it really wants to pull you back. So if I do that quickly, you'll see that it snaps back. So that's because there's like the biggest force is being applied mm. at the maximum extension yes. and that's when you're going to have the greater restoring force. Yes. And yep. your acceleration therefore on your brain is going to be greatest. Mm -hmm. And the greater the acceleration, the more, uh, the greater the difference in acceleration, deceleration of your different parts of your brain. So how do we prevent that? So if we have a neck, right, that is, for example, this, right, for the same force, if I have a longer extension or a greater range of motion for the same force we don't reach that end point okay. and so you don't get that peak force and therefore peak acceleration acting on the brain the other way is we strengthen the neck so if we have a stronger neck for the same force not only do you not reach the end range of motion you don't extend as much mm -hmm. so if you have a stronger neck for example if i get hit this way and there's a a wall there or if I'm falling onto the ground because my neck has absorbed the shock my head then is in less danger of hitting uh, a solid object okay so again reducing the force reducing the acceleration on the brain so the idea of neck training is to strengthen the neck whilst not limiting the range of motion so you want a strong neck mm -hmm. that is maintains its strength as it is being Stretched, stretched or lengthened. So I suppose then the next question is if you want to reduce the likelihood of a concussion mm -hmm. is, and again, this isn't necessarily training advice, but what kind of things do maybe people do wrong when they think I'm going to get a really strong neck, I'm going to start doing some kind of neck training and like weightlifting on their neck. So that's something you've got to be really careful with, isn't it? So the neck, the way the neck is kind of um, structured, mm -hmm. it's not, um, it hasn't adapted to lift a heavy load okay so you don't ever pick something up with your neck that's not kind of how the neck works so these kind of hats with like weights hanging on them that mm. people kind of do this yeah they're, so they're not a good idea yeah. not a brilliant idea i mean your what you want your neck to do is to be able to absorb force right so by extending and flexing the neck with weight on you're training it to lift a load mm -hmm. which is not uh, its main function yeah um and some training, neck training that I've seen will limit your range of motion. Okay. So if you have a really stiff neck and there's no movement in it and I get hit, then all of that kind of force is transferred directly to the brain. Mm -hmm. Your neck can't absorb any of it. So you get a massive uh, peak acceleration through the brain yeah. causing a lot more damage. Mm -hmm. So we use uh, a neck harness We've got to, it over here, haven't we? Yeah. So if you pass it here. So all it is, so you do see people kind of lifting heavy weights. The other thing I would say is if your neck kind of spasms or you lose strength mm -hmm. and you've got a heavy weight literally dangling from your head, it is then only going to make the strain that you've just encountered a yeah. lot worse. Yeah. So the good thing about this is you can step out of it at any time. It's only using your body weight and it's isometric hold. So if I scooch Sorry, over I, here, go on I, I'll stand on this side. So all we do is we place it around our neck and we are using our body weight and to... You, and you'd be stood up for this, yeah? Yeah, so to start with, you'd sit or you could kneel, standing, uh, you'd work up standing. And then as I increase the angle of my body, right, it gets harder and harder, right? And that's all you need to do for neck training. You do it backwards, sideways, forwards, and then the other side. And you're basically training your neck to absorb the force of a collision. And that collision doesn't have to be direct to the head. If I push Lewis that way, his neck has to bring his head back to centre. If it's weak, you can get whiplash. Mm -hmm. So if you get right down to the bottom and your neck bounces off, you're gonna have more acceleration through the brain. Yeah. And so it's really important. Um, and it's been highlighted in rugby, especially American football. It's been around for a long time. Yeah. Uh, the dangers of concussion. Um, Cause I think a lot of people traditionally, they think 
I've been concussed, I've had a smack on the head, yeah. not feeling great, but I'll keep playing that match, mm. or maybe they'll get back into training a couple of days later. Yeah. And I think that's, that kind of can have like a longer term health effect on, on those yeah. individuals. Yeah, so uh, without sounding too dramatic, mm. um, concussions can be unfortunately life threatening. Yeah. Uh, the current guidance is if you have a concussion, you stop um, uh, kind of the sport for the next few days. Yeah. And then from the day, the last day of symptoms, you can't return to full contact for another 14 days, I believe. Mm -hmm. If you suffer another concussion before recovering fully, I think you should rest for six months, which is obviously a long time. Mm. Um, it's a bit of a pain for some people, so they, they kind of don't bother. But I think the, the risks far outweigh the reward of returning to sport early from a concussion. Yeah, and especially it's the kind of thing that, you know, when you're, a, you know, if you're at school playing rugby and you want to get, get into the right team, you want to mm -hmm. play these matches, it's very hard to think of yourself in 20, 30 yeah. years' time when you're maybe in your late 40s or yeah. 50s. And then the impact of, you know, lots of concussions mm -hmm. in your 20s can actually become quite serious. Yeah, uh, and there's, um, unfortunately, uh, older professional rugby players and footballers, actually, yeah. Um, who suffered a lot of concussions and weren't maybe um, didn't take it as seriously as the, as it should have been. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, are suffering mm. the consequences now. Yeah. So all we want is for the proper advice to reach as many people as possible in terms of neck training. I'm not a hundred percent on the timescales for returning to sport. Yeah. There, it differs mm. for different sports, but the basic understanding is that concussions are serious. You can uh, do stuff to help prevent them. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest doing that. And that if you get one, just to take it seriously. Cool. Uh, Joe, thank you so much. Um, That's all right. Again, like I say, we're not medical experts. We're not giving you individual personal training advice about how to actually train your neck in this video. But I think it's interesting to know that there is a lot of physics that supports this if mm. we think about the way that forces are applied and how that's related to the acceleration on the body and then actually how that can maybe be modelled with very simple things like the egg that shows yeah. that it's not just that bruising at the front of the brain, but it's kind of yeah. the, the different density of material which are accelerating at different yeah. rates inside. If you do want more information, if you uh, Google uh, FK Pro or on Instagram, uh, team FK Pro, we, there's a lot of information and we have a special uh, Instagram page for neck training, so it's FK Neck Pro. We'll link it all in the description. Yes, yeah, so that will be down there. Uh, I must say, uh, Joe, um, you do work uh, with FK Pro, but also he works for me with Physics yeah. Online and that's kind of partly why we're doing this video together, also you're a physics graduate, yeah. so you know the kind of science behind it. Yeah. It's um, ideal working for a sports kind of company and a physics company and we get to merge the two and yeah. They interlink very well. So if you, I, I know personally that my knowledge of physics has helped me with uh, my different sports. So it's, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Joe, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for listening. Good. Cheers. Goodbye.